Folks want to know who is infected with the coronavirus. And that's led to speculation and the sharing of names in companies, schools, and the media. So where is the line between the right to privacy versus public safety? Joining us now is Harry Nelson. He is a best-selling author and the founder and co-managing partner of the Nelson Hardiman Law Firm. Good morning. Thanks Great to be with you guys. Here. Uh, you know, most people are familiar with HIPAA laws that prohibit the release of confidential medical information. And it's a safeguard to ensure that things remain private. But when we get to this kind of a situation, there's a balance, I'm sure, that needs to be struck when it comes to not having the virus spread and people needing to know whether or not someone has the coronavirus. Yeah, so we're at a really interesting point. The virus is really testing whether HIPAA and other privacy laws are a good thing in protecting mm -hmm. people's information or whether they're a problem today because it's stopping people from learning about potential exposure risks. So what's the law? And, and isn't there a situation where the doctors have to inform, inform the health department? How, how does it work? Great. So, so doctors have a, an exception. The general rule is doctors can't share anyone's protected health information, uh, your name, your identity. Uh, but there is a public health exception that allows them to, uh, to notify public health authorities, local, state, and federal. It does not, the public health exception doesn't allow doctors or hospitals to share anyone's information. What we're seeing doctors and hospitals doing locally is asking for permission to share with neighbors, with anybody who might be affected if your kids are in the same school together. So if you get people's permission, it's okay. But the only authority doctors have in a public health emergency is to tell government authorities. So if, if the doctor, if I have it, the doctor is asking me, Frank, is it okay to tell people around you that you have COVID-19. Exactly, and, and we're seeing that happening more. I, I, by the way, I want to say Tom Hanks should be regarded as a national hero for trying to take the shame away because the, the less people feel that this is a badge of shame, which it should not be, yeah. uh, and the less we start treating these people like pariahs, right. the more inclined people will be to respond to those. But that's what local hospitals are doing. Okay. Yeah, and we, we have seen celebrities and athletes and, and people come out on social media. And speaking of social media, is there a gray area there when it comes to that and the ramifications of people sharing names of people that have coronavirus? Yeah, so I think people, I think we need to be really careful until people have shared their own stories. I mean, I, it's unlikely that we're going to see an avalanche of defamation and uh, false light mm -hmm. privacy lawsuits, but it, there's some really troubling things going on on social media, a lot of outing people. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, what I would recommend is what we're seeing that's, that's, that you can do is say, we've heard that a parent in this school mm -hmm. or a player in the NBA or a police officer without giving details. So that's, I think there's a safe zone where we can let people know if they're at a, in a, at a risk point right. without taking that kind of that step too far and creating what, I, what, I, what I'm calling it coronavirus bullying. Mm. Right, yeah. I had a friend this weekend say, I have heard that someone who lives in my building has tested positive, and we're worried about what's going to happen in our building, and should people be informed that this building, there is a person who is positive, and should people who are outside of that building know? And so what are the powers for the governments in terms of, and what is the right thing for them to do in terms of striking that balance that you first talked so, about. So first of all, on your first point, I think it's important if you know that somebody in a building is infected, it's important to let neighbors know, people coming into the building, outsiders know. And so the good news is that our government has authority. Local county public health officials, the state and the federal government have broad authority to send out notifications, to test people, to order people into uh, quarantine and isolation. So the government has that power. And in fact, they can, the government can actually, at the state and federal level, can charge people criminally if they are not uh, uh, respecting orders to isolate and if they start infecting people as a result. Mm. The president declared a national state of emergency. Uh, and something I noticed on Google that I think is being searched quite a bit is the Stafford Act. Explain what that is and, and how will it be used by state and local officials? So uh, the Stafford Act allows the government additional authority in this time to put out more orders, to put out some of the things like uh, isolation and quarantine, mm -hmm. to criminalize certain kinds of conduct, and to even detain and test people. So it gives the government broader authority in a time of uh, in a pandemic as we are uh, and in a national emergency to do a lot more um, and to take some liberties with uh, uh, with some of the freedoms that we ordinarily have and Harry I think it's important what you said not to shame people who uh, are infected with COVID-19 eventually a, a, a large percentage of our population may become infected so 
you may be next. So, a hundred percent. I think I think that's really the most important message in this time. As all the things that people are panicking and afraid of, the one thing that you're doing you're doing a service to the people around you when you let them know and give them a chance to take appropriate action, so they're not exposing more people. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Terry Thank Nelson, you so much. Author of two best-selling healthcare books and the founder and co-managing partner at Nelson Hardeman Law Firm for Healthcare Providers. For more info, you can check out uh, their website. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Harry.